JD, if you want to go ahead, my man. Hey, Coach, how's it going? Going all right. Hey, I asked uh, Jan about this, and uh, you know, this is this is close to my heart. Both of my my mom and my grandmother are survivors, and it's so cool that you guys wear the pink uniforms. I know you're a survivor as well. What does it mean to have you know your your team in pink and, and play for something bigger than just uh, basketball? Um, you know, I, I just always think it's one of the best life lessons and, you know, with cancer and every single person is affected by it. So I think that's what, um, I guess, elevates it to a higher level because it's in everybody's soul. And, um, you know, um, every day I'm reminded, um, you know, it was four years, February 20th when I, when I had my first diagnosis. So, um, you know, it, it's... Uh, I thank God every day, um, but I thank God every day, even when I wasn't diagnosed, because I had so many people that I've lost to cancer. So it's it's just special. Um, you always play a little, you always dig a little deeper. Everybody thinks you dig deep. Um, when we play, we dig deep every day, but I think you dig a little deeper, because as you're fighting cancer and going through a lot of things, you have to dig deeper. You got to find something else. And so um, I'm just always. Um, Always honored and, and blessed to, to be a part of, you know, Pink Day. Absolutely. It's very cool that you guys did that. Um, so talking about, uh, you know, a little bit of, of the skit that you guys have been on, um, we were, Ian and I were talking about it in the break between uh, interviews here. Um, you guys put a pretty great game at Michigan State mm -hmm. you know, before that last sequence. Um, so I guess what did you guys pick up from mm -hmm. the that you going to bring? Yeah, you know, um, you know, as we always say, it's ex exceptionally tough, the Big Ten. And, um, you know, the biggest thing for us is we're really growing. Uh, I think we're starting to click. We're starting to understand the chemistry we have on the floor, um, really understand each other. It's taken us a little bit longer because we're a new team and uh, a lot of new pieces uh, without, you know, because of the injuries and COVID. So it's been a process. It's difficult. It's struggle. It's frustration. Um, but we're playing exceptionally hard and we're growing, um, you know, and it was obviously, um, you know, unfortunate that we didn't come out with the win and it was heartbreaking. Um, you know, um, we did all the right things and, uh, you know, a kid hits a shot with 0.5 seconds and is probably the last person that um, was really shooting the ball that day for Michigan State. But. You know, uh, again, we're we're, um, we're battling and we're competing. And, and you know, when you are kind of on a losing um, uh, side of things, you know, that can go either way. And uh, I just keep keep seeing our growth and the fight that we have. And uh, you know, that bodes well for our team and our um, encouragement and being positive, um, making strides forward. You know, everybody wants to win, but um, you know, right now we're we're really focusing on getting better every day. With the loss of Carissa, it's it's pretty hard to fill that roster, uh, you know, role uh, of an offensive scorer or that has the same kind of mindset that she does. Are you guys kind of relying on Kayana Trailer to fill that role, or have you spread Carissa's responsibilities around the starting line? You know, it's it's difficult. I mean, you know, there's. Um game experience and then there's real game experience you know you can say you have experienced players back but how much have they played in um you know real games and you know um carissa's injury we knew she probably wouldn't come back this year uh, but roxanne mccullough when she tore her acl that that was a big big hit to our program um, you know, Carissa has that leadership of playing three years, understanding game situations, understanding clock, where do we need the ball, um, the leadership of encouragement. Um, she's vocal as well as uh, can perform at a high level. And Roxanne was uh, also a point guard, a wing, our defender. So, um, you know, losing those two early on is one thing. I mean, there's no excuses, but it, it is what it is. I mean, with what we lost last year and what we had to try to recover from um, not being healthy until January and then with COVID, it just has a combination of everything. Um, you know, Cass Harden, I didn't think she'd have to have surgery and be out. 
until January and then you're not in you know the best shape and I didn't think Madison wouldn't be able to do any any preseason for four months and get thrown into things and you know Tam coming off a knee injury so I mean there's there's all kinds of stuff but Kiana Trailer has been our go-to she understands she's like Carissa I mean she's a junior she has to step up um it's nice when you have another group around you like Carissa always had Neek and Re, um and you know um it would, it would be helpful if you have those missing pieces, but we don't, and we knew that coming in. And I think that Brooke Moore is starting to understand um, that part of it, um, uh, of what Purdue is and what we're looking for in leadership. I think she's starting to, to understand that. Cass, again, she started coming back, and we thought she'd be a captain this year and play a lot. And with her foot injury, and playing in games here and there and then having COVID protocol and then coming back. She's the other missing link because she had a real experience last year. So um, I know we're limping along a little bit, but, you know, Kayana and uh, Brooke and Cass um, are really the ones that had to help. And Kayana can't do it by herself. Definitely well said. Um, coming back, you know, two games at home, it's obviously important to snap the skid and, and finish strong. I guess um, Maryland's going to be pretty tough, uh, but then you guys had a pretty good handle on Illinois. Mm -hmm. So talking about you know these two home games, I guess it's a pretty basic question, but how important is it to finish this season strong? It's always important, you know, um, to finish season strong, you know. And everybody just thinks strong is winning, um, and it is. Um, but you also have to look at your competition and um, the layers of what has uh, occurred this year. So, you know, for us, you know, Maryland is a top eight team in the country. They're the leading scoring team in the country. They shoot over 40% from the three. Um, they've got more depth. They've got some players coming back um, that were injured, um, you know, so. Um, any given day, anything can happen. Uh, I think we have a good game plan, but we have to really control tempo as much as we can. Um, it's pink day, so hopefully all of us will dig a little deeper and have a little uh, special qualities. If Kayana could have another s be special like she was at Michigan State, that would help. Um, you know, uh, Illinois game, um, what happened there, it was uh, obviously uh, none of us were happy about it. It's senior day. We have four seniors. We should be playing especially hard for them seniors. And if we keep playing the brand of basketball that we've been playing, although not winning these games, but playing the way we're playing, um, you know, we need to do some, you know, good, solid things this week. That's it for me. Thank you so much. Good luck. Thank you. Alex? Good. So the Spartans were able to hit 10 of their first 14 shots in the first quarter. What do you think caused that consistency in the first quarter? How did your Boilers adjust to stop them? Uh, against Michigan State, they just got up and down the floor. Um, they uh, just pushed the ball. Um, where we've struggled a little bit is our post players getting back. Um, and uh, our transition D, um, you know, we have three players back, um, but they just got the ball out quick and uh, passed it up and kind of threw it down our throat. Um, we called a timeout and then we adjusted and they weren't able to do that again. And, uh, you know, we got in the flow on the offense. We were attacking, shooting the three, getting back, playing really, really good defense. So, you know, um, obviously we made an adjustment and, um, you know, we, we, we fought very, very hard to, to get back in the game, take the lead and um, do some good things. You know, I think she did this in non-conference, kind of just trying to will us to win. And um, But this was her best game of her career. I felt she was the best player on the floor on both ends of the court. Uh, she really, really played at an elite level on the defensive end. Um, we, you know, Nia Clown only had six points, and we kind of corralled her up top, and we did a great job um, doing that. But she just had the game going. I mean, it's it's – one of those games where, you know, I mean, her deep three-point shot was going. Um, they couldn't stop her attacking. She had that really quick first step back. Um, her legs felt really, really good. And um, she was physical on both ends of the floor. So it wasn't that she did anything different. Her, her, a lot of her fingers have been pretty crushed, um, and they healed a little bit. 
Um, so she obviously shot the ball better, um, which was uh, great to see. But she just had a, a different gear than anybody on the floor. I think that's good for your psyche, understanding, you know, Maryland and Illinois probably, um, you know, remembering them, um, especially Illinois being recent and uh, Maryland going when the, all the riots were going on. So um, our mind wasn't really in a good place <laughs> when we went out there. But just knowing, um, you know, the three opponents, uh, playing them before, you know, right now it's a uh, mindset, it's uh, confidence. Um, it's hard to have confidence if you're not winning, but if you are getting better, you got to find something positive. Um, again, you could go the other way, but uh, we keep battling and keep getting better and keep improving. Um, you know, and we know that Maryland, uh, top eight team, you know, I use 